is where you find it, the miners say. And this was never better demonstrated than at Cripple Creek, Colorado, where back in 1892, a cowboy stubbed his toe on a strange-looking piece of rock and started one of the last gold rushes in Western history. Within a year, 50 deep shafts were pouring out tons of the richest ore ever found. The town grew fast and loud, and as usual, men died faster and louder. With the customary violence and bloodshed of a gold camp, something new was added to make Cripple Creek unique among all her sinful sisters. Waylaying shipments of smelted gold was too old-fashioned for the Cripple Creek gangs. These boys weren't waiting for the ore to reach the smelter. Wagon load upon wagon load of the highest grade stuff, some of it running as much as $60,000 a load, was simply disappearing in the thin Rocky Mountain air. Sam the driver, two of the mine crew, unwounded four others besides me. Well, couldn't you identify any of them? No, Marshal. They were all masked. That's the tenth wagon load of my richest ore that's been hijacked this month. And six loads of mine never got to the smelter. The way they select only the richest ore, you'd think they had access to my secret assay reports. I think you gentlemen should appeal to your senators in Washington. What do you suggest, Sullivan? Well, as the government assayer, I must agree with the Marshal. The loss of gold in such quantities is a matter of national concern. Gentlemen, I think that's a good idea. They were right about that. It was a matter of national concern. Well, this year of 1893 was one of financial depression and near panic. The country's gold reserve had reached such a low ebb that President Cleveland placed an embargo on the sale and shipment of that precious metal to foreign nations. Every ounce of gold was needed by the national treasury. So the problem of the wholesale looting of Cripple Creek mines became the immediate and urgent business of the United States Secret Service. Jumpy, ain't you, Brett? That Texas lingo of yours had me fooled. I thought the Panhandle boys were back. Well, Chief Brother. Hello, Ivers. Glad to see you, sir. So you did get my wire after all. Yeah, I got it all right, but I had quite a time following your instructions. <laughs> when you didn't reach Ratoon on time, Galland and I started down to see what had happened to you. <laughs> Every peace officer in Texas was after my scout for the border job. <laughs> How come you didn't clear me with the state authorities? It's better this way, Brett. Your Texas reputation may help a lot on that Cripple Creek case. Oh, so that's where we're going. It's the biggest gold-stealing case in history. They're getting away with tons of it. Well, how can they hope to sell tons of gold in the United States, sir? They don't. They're smuggling it out of the country. 
Sounds like a big job. Big and dangerous. More than a dozen local peace officers have already been killed. Merely trying to stop the high graders. Is that as far as they got? Yes, but that's only the first link. And we want every link in that chain. But most of all, the men who engineered the scheme and arranged the payoff. Is this Big Bronk the only help I'm to have? No, oh, ain't that nice. <laughs> <laughs> you won't go wrong with Larry. But you'll also have his brother strapped. Well, now that's better. Where do we pick him up? He's already in Triple Creek, giving it the ones over. Any report from him yet? Nothing definite, but he spotted one of the toughest gangs in the West, the Muldoon Outfit, working for the Cabo Livery Stable. Well, that might be a lead, sir. Maybe. Anyhow, Strap suggests that a couple of new gunfighters and outlaws might find it easy to make a hookup. Well, with Billy the Kid here as a partner, I can't miss. But don't force your hand. The right people will spot you soon enough. Where do we find Strap? Don't try. He'll be watching for you. Let him make the contact. Well, that's all I have to tell you. From here on, you're on your own. Thanks, Chief. But I'm counting on the three of you. Thank you, sir. Way to the livery stable, friend. Livery stable? Right down there at the end of the street. Honey, Jake, three wagons to go back to the woodcutter's camp tonight. Fresh horses and sober drivers. Yes, boss. You early, Muldoon. We don't roll for a couple of hours. We won't roll at all till we get our pay for those last three jobs. You get your pay when I get mine, not before. We want ours now, or you can get yourself a new crew. Nobody quits this outfit. I'll see the boss. Go ahead. Stable your ponies, Jets? Thanks. We'll take care of them for you. Any ideas to where we can get a room around here? It's hard to say. The town's overcrowded. We might try over the Silver Palace. Much obliged. Customers, Jake. about getting a room here. You can ask the boss there, Mr. Kirby. Mr. Kirby? Better known as Silver Kirby. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Now we'd like to get a room. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we're all filled up. Livery man, Cabot figured you might be able to take care of us. Oh, I see. And you boys must have ridden up from the valley tonight. Yeah, 40-mile day. It's a long pull. Let's see if we can't do something for you. Julie. Have we a canceled reservation available for these gentlemen? Why, yes. We had a room ready for Mr. McKee, but he's gone back to Victor. Well, boys, it looks like you're in luck. Come along, gentlemen. I'll show you the way. Thanks, ma'am. And thank you for being so accommodating. Glad to oblige. That's what we're here for. I wonder what Cabot saw in those two to worry about. Maybe it's the way they sling their artillery. Texas style, low and handy. I suppose you boys came here hoping to get rich quickly like all the others. No, ma'am, we just drifted up from Texas to take in the sights of Cripple Creek. <laughs> yeah, and we sure like what we've seen so far. They must have moved the Blarney Stone to Texas. Here's the room. We had it ready for Mr. McKee. He owns the gold dollar mine. So at least you boys will sleep in a millionaire's bed. Yeah, it looks real cozy-like. Thanks, Miss Julie. Not at all. It's part of my job. Now, if you'll give me your names, I'll register for you. Ivers is mine. Bert Ivers. This is Larry Gallant. Mine's Julie Hanson. Good night. Good night, Miss Julie. Good night, ma'am. Did you see Strap down there dealing faro? Yeah, it looks like a real sweet listening. I sure hope. Why, do you think somebody's worried about us already? If we're in the right place, they'd worry about any strangers. Strap gets in touch with us tonight. Well, we'll leave that to him. It's his play. So 
Silver says no dice. Everybody waits for the big payoff. So we wait. Is that it? No. We make our own collection tonight. Now, you two stay here. I'll get the boys in the other room. One dealer left. Get the boys. Good night, Gillis. Hi, Mr. Kirby. And it's all here, Mr. Kirby. You didn't give him a chance to spend any of it, that's certain. Put it away, Ed. I uh, don't like to look a gift horse in the mouth, but how did you two happen to invite yourself to Muldoon's party? I reckon it's just force of habit. You see, Larry and me, we're uh, sort of ground floor fellas. Anytime we're sleeping two stories high, we get kind of nervous. So I was just looking out the window just to make sure we could reach the ground easy. Uh, in case of fire. <laughs> fire or... Even the wrong kind of knock on the door. Then you saw that Muldoon outfit jump me. Yeah, four guns on one man. We don't like that kind of odds down in Texas. It's a lucky break all the way around. Gentlemen, this calls for a drink on the house. And that's Bill Tate of Colorado Springs. He worked for you, too? Drove for me once in a while. Very sad affair, but the best night's business we've had for some time. I can make a very attractive club break for all six. Well, Silver, you can lock up now. Corpus delicti has been identified, and Hawkins here offers a very good club rate. Six coffins, no flowers, no mourners. Seems to me that's up to Cabot. I'd be more careful about my hired help if I were you. Look, I gotta take what I can get. Cutting and hauling this town's supply of cordwood is a tough job. If that's all, Marshal, I'll be rolling. I gotta hustle up a new crew. That's all, Cabot, and thanks. Oh, I can make it easier for you, Mr. Cabot, if you'll furnish one of your own wagons. My largest hearse is only a two-passenger job. See Jake at the stable. Oh, splendid. I'll send my decorator over to drape it in black. You can drape it in red, white, and blue, for all I care. A patriotic idea but a little too unconventional for Cripple Creek. Well, good night, all, and thanks again, gentlemen, for being so cooperative. Miss Julie. 
sure glad you weren't down here when this happened, Miss Julie. So am I. Yeah, it's pretty rough. But it couldn't be helped once it started. I suppose not. And I'm sure Mr. Kirby is very grateful to you. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Well, I reckon Larry and me will shove off for bed. Good night, men. Consider yourselves the honored guests of the house for as long as you want to stay. Well, now, that's real handsome of you. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Nothing like good old Southern chivalry. <laughs> Imagine those boys risking their lives for a total stranger like you. Or am I taking too much for granted? I never saw him before, boss. And it's my hunch they made this grandstand play to get in your good book, not mine. What do you think, Denver? Well, all I say is, boss, you better keep that safe locked while your new guests of honor are in town. I agree with Denver. I not only locked the safe, I changed the combination. Night, gents. Well, Marshal, how does it check up from the point of view of the law? Well, I'd say the town is well rid of the Muldoon outfit, but I'm not so sure it'll benefit by the change. Those two gun artists ain't here for their health. Maybe I better contact my old friend Sheriff Summers down in Amarillo. He's got a record of every gunfighter in Texas. It's a smart idea, Marshal. We law-abiding citizens can't be too careful. Hmm. Why don't you look under the bed? Why don't I knock your block off, you mean? I'm sorry, Brett. You're dead right. I nearly wrecked our case. You sure did. Strap! Hi, Strat. I ought to take you across my knee and spank you like oh. I did when you were a kid. All right, ball me out. I got it coming. It isn't that bad, Larry. You just broke a plate. I think I saved the pieces, but you guys will have to glue them together. How bad is it broken? I can't tell for sure. Silver Kirby's grateful, but suspicious. That fish-eyed killer of his, Denver Jones, figures you're a couple of refugee outlaws looking for a soft touch. I helped the idea lost. Well, if Kirby runs things, he might make us a proposition. How does Kirby add up? I got nothing but hunches so far. But there's a tie-in between him and Cabot. Yeah, I figured as much. The way Cabot's name got us this room. How do they work it? Here's all I got. Cabot has 10 four-horse wagons hauling cordwood. That's the only fuel they have here. Where do they get it? I don't know, but his woodcutter's camp runs full blast all summer, and his rigs roll day and night. Out empty and back loaded, huh? Hasn't anybody ever tried to trail him? Yeah. Six marshals and 10 deputies, but they never got back. Hmm. Well, it begins to figure. You've done all right, Strap, for a guy anchored to a feral bank layout and only here a week. What about this gal, Julie Hansen? All I know is she works for a living to keep her old man eating. He's an old hard luck prospector who's dug more holes than all the gophers in the West. Well, we can't overlook anybody connected with Kirby. I guess I'll have to give Miss Julie my personal attention. There he goes again, grabbing off the best assignment. <laughs> Cordwood Cabot himself at the range. Off the bed, Larry, and harness up. We're going for a ride. You got it, Brett. That wagon may put us on first base. I have a hunch it'll do more than that. It may buy us a seat at Silver Kirby's table. That's the best night's sleep I've had since I met up with him. <laughs> Strap. Blow out the lamp.
That's it, boys. Well, now, how do you like that? I'll be doggone. What do we do now? Follow Cabot to the second link in the chain? No, we haven't got time. It's too near morning. Besides, I've got a better idea. Mask up. It's up abandoned hole. this dead shaft. Well, I couldn't sleep, so I got to the window for a smoke. And there's those two buckaroos climbing down from the roof to the ground. Why didn't you tail them? I'm just a faro dealer. I haven't been hired to tail anybody. I appreciate your loyalty, Gillis. Perhaps I can throw something your way. To start with, take your things and move into that empty room next to our Texas guests. Keep cases on them, night and day. I'll stick to them like a brother. Where have you been? Sleeping in your stable? No, I've been walking 10 miles. Can I see you in private? Oh, that's all right. I've uh, just taken Gillis into the corporation. Pour our roughed up friend a cup of coffee, Strap. What's the sad story? Two masked gunmen killed Ben Fry and hijacked my wagon last night. They get the ore? Yeah, and the wagon's back at the stable, empty, so they've cached the load someplace. Morning, Mr. Kirby. Morning, man. Morning, boys. Morning, Mr. Kirby. Morning. Have breakfast with it. Well, that's an invitation we never refuse. That belt buckle. Who are you? Cabo. But these are the two eggs who stuck me up. There must be some mistake. These men are my friends. They've proved it. How about it, Ivers? Yeah, we're mighty sorry, Mr. Kirby. But Larry and me had no idea you were mixed up with Cabot's outfit. Naturally, we'd have laid off that ore wagon. Naturally. And that being the case, all you have to do is tell us where you dumped those sacks, and there'll be no hard feelings. That was mighty rich ore, Mr. Kirby. Yeah, from what we hear, it must be worth close to $40,000. Oh! It's Julie's father. He struck it rich. Nonsense. That old claim is isn't worth a quarter. Never will be. If there's any gold in it, somebody dumped it down the shaft. 
Three cap boys to the old Juliana, the richest strike this year. Uh, Juliana. So that's where you dumped it. <laughs> Our mistake. We thought it was just an abandoned hole in the ground. I admire your nerve, Ivers. This sort of changes your plans, doesn't it? I don't think so. If we could take it away from Cabo, there shouldn't be much trouble handling Hanson. Especially since the old man's trying to get away with it himself. Granted. Let's presume you recover the gold. How do you dispose of it? You can't go driving around the mountain with a wagon load of stolen gold. Larry, looks like he's got us there. Yeah, we never figured on that. Okay, Mr. Kirby, it's your deal. I thought you'd see it my way. Larry, since we caused all this trouble, the least we could do is help Mr. Kirby get that ore back. That's straight talking. You won't lose by it. Hello? You've got yourself a couple of men worth a dozen Muldoons. You're asking a lot of me, Silver. Kiss and make up with a couple of guys who pull me off my wagon and near break my neck. <laughs> Cabo, you surprise me. These two Texas tornadoes might be just what the doctor ordered. It's one way to find out is let them sit in the game, deal them a few hands, and see how they play it. If that's the way you want it, that's the way I want it. It won't be long now before I'll be joining that millionaire club of yours, Mr. Hatton. Yes, sir. My congratulations. That's beautiful stuff, Hanson. After I get a few tons out, Mr. Sullivan, will you assay it for me so I'll know that I got a vein, not just a pocket? Any time. I'll be glad to oblige. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, Dad, this is wonderful. I can hardly believe it. Won't be long before we'll have that big house in Denver like we both wanted, honey. <laughs> My gal won't have to work here much longer, Mr. Silver. Come on, honey, I want to talk to you alone. Listen, honey, and don't jump. That ore really isn't ours. A gang of high grade skunks dumped a whole load of it down the Juliana shaft. Dad, and you're going to pass it off as yours? Oh, now you know your dad better than that. What all the excitement you started. But I figured it was the best way to catch the crooks to dump the ore on us, and they're sure to hijack it away from me. I won't have you trying to fight off hijackers. Then not me. I'll get Marshal Tethero to set a trap for him. Oh, that's different. And you're not too disappointed? No, Dad, and I'm proud of you. We strike it rich someday, and it'll be on the up and up, too. Sure we will. Now, remember, don't say a word to anybody about this, will you? I understand. And you be careful. I will be, honey. Don't you worry about your old man. <laughs> Silver. You had dinner out. Be back soon. And I can't wait. Tell him this just came in from a friend of mine in Texas. If he wants anything done about it tonight, he knows where to find me. Okay, Marshal. Twelve hundred, Gillis. Sign the book. For me, will you, George, while I run an errand? Kill a strap. Good evening, Mr. Kirby. Good evening, Ed. Nice crowd out there. Marshal Tethero left a letter for you to read. Where? Right there on my desk. Sounded important. Something from Texas. There's no letter here. Well, you put it right down there. Gillis just signed the money book. He was the last man in here. Oh. 
All right, men. Get your bets down. Get the horses. We've got to see the marshal right away. I guess that does it, Marshal. Now, you wait here till I go and get energy. Well, uh, never mind. We can take it from here on. Now, go down it, Marshal. I want to see that order delivered, just like I promised. Now, Hanson, let's be reasonable. I want to make it as easy as possible for the hijackers. Just me and the driver. Then my deputies can ride down from the hills and get them all. Well, me going ain't going to stop them high graders now, from... Now, nothing the... doing. Besides, I promised Julie I wouldn't let you take any chances. Now, you just ramble on back to town. Well, all right. I'll go. But I don't like it. Hanson, go back to town where I ain't going. This is my business, too. Energy? Are you listening? This is my idea, and I ain't going to get pros out of it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, Energy. Come on. Come on. Come on, take it over. <laughs> There's nothing like having the law on your side. All right, let's get along. Hi, right, cowboys. Marshal, Silver wants to see you right away. Did he get that letter? Yeah, he sure did. He said to let all bets ride as they lie. He'll take care of it. Well, boys, have a nice trip. Come on, young fella. <laughs> We've been two-timed by the orneriest critty that ever wore a tin badge. Come on, let's get to town. Come on, Energy. I gotta go now. I got business to attend to. Will you come on? Come on, Energy, will you? Come on. Uh, come on! Ride up and tell Cabo my horse picked up a stone. I'll be along in a minute. I didn't know you were in so deep on this play, Gillis. I was until tonight. That letter put me in. What did you make of it? Same as you did, Marshal. Ivers and his pal might be government men. I don't know why Silver didn't wipe them both out right there. Reckon it's because he never saw the letter. Take it easy. All right, Gillis, what is it? Federal or state? Secret Service. Now ride slow. Left turn. Well, Cripple Creek's to the right. I'm taking you down to Colorado Springs and let an honest sheriff put you on ice till this case is closed. Oh, don't do that, Gillis. They don't give a double-dealing marshal like me an even break in this state. I hate crooks. But most of all, a sworn officer of the law with a dirty badge. Get going. Explanations? Give me time and I'll think of one. Where's that letter? What letter? Let's go. What about the marshal? Haven't you heard? He died in the line of duty. The high graders got him.
All right, you two. We don't need you any longer. You can go back to town. Right. Reckon here's where they want to stop our education. Yeah, I guess we'll have to work our way through college. Back to the stables, boys. Slag is full of it. That's what you get from processing silver ore. Right. This used to be a silver camp. They've got some of the old machinery down there running the gold ore through. Yeah, but I wonder how they ship that gold out. Well, we haven't got time to find out now. We've got to beat Cabot back into town. This is sure the main link in our chain. Break this and we break the case. Let's try this way. All right, Mr. Secret Service. I know all I need to know about you. There's one other question. Are Brett Ivers and Larry Galland working with you? Those two trigger-happy hillbillies. Not a chance. I never saw them before in my life. That's a good answer, Gillis. Let's see how long you'll stick with it. We're going to play a little game. My own version of Russian roulette. Did you ever hear of it? No. Stand him over there against the wall, Lefty. There's one cartridge in this gun and five empty chambers. This slug with your name on it may be in the first or the last, or somewhere in between. Chief, that's one for the book. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. <laughs> I'm going to give you a gambling chance. If you give me an honest answer to my question, you walk out that door a free man. You expect me to believe that? That's another gamble you'll have to take. 
At the moment, the odds are five to one that this is an empty chamber. Ready, Gillis? How about my answer? Have it your way. That was a long shot, Gillis. Now it's four to one. Same question. Same answer. This is getting interesting. One of the next four, maybe the very next. Any change of mind? Here goes your three to one shot. Well, what do you know? With luck like yours, a man could get rich. I'll lay two to one on our lucky friend from Washington. I'll take 10. Me too, boss. 40 to 20 it is. Good luck, Gillis. My money's on you. Uncle Sam has some durable employees. I'll say that for you, Gillis. But now we're down to cases. One of the next two. An even money bet. Still gambling, Gillis? Or do I get my honest answer? You had it, Silver. Go ahead. Wind it up. What do you say, boys? Double or nothing? You're on. Shoot, boss. You're faded. My hat's off to you, Gillis. I've been a gambler all my life, and I've never seen a better play. As far as I'm concerned, you've earned a break. You don't believe me? I'm going to turn you loose. That is, when my gold investments pay off. Take him to his room, Lefty. Have a good sleep, Gillis. You've got it coming. Best faro dealer I ever had. That you, Gillis? Uh, hi, Denver. Hello, gents. Just get back? Yeah, we just rolled in with a load of logs. Where's Gillis? He isn't with us anymore. Something happened to him? That skunk turned out to be a government man. How'd you find out? Marshal Tethero got a tip-off letter from Texas, from an old friend. What does Gillis do but steal the letter and shoot the marshal? Silver and I got there just in time. Just in time for what? To grab Gillis and bring him in. We worked him over plenty. Finally came through and admitted everything. Can you imagine a weasel like that? How about that? What'd you, what'd you do to him? I always give a game guy a break. I plugged him in the back so he wouldn't see it coming. <laughs> see you downstairs. Right. Funny about that letter. Nobody in Texas knew Strap's business but me. Not even our own folks. That letter was about me, Larry, not Strap. How do you know? He gave it to me last night. He wrote a message on it that he'd have to drop off the case and take Tethero with him. Let's see it. I burned it back on the road when I stalled to take care of the horse's hoof. It's all my fault, Larry, for holding out on you. You couldn't have known they'd catch up with Strap. All he had to do was light out for Colorado Springs with a marshal. Well, we could have hung back long enough to cover the road for him. He didn't ask you to, did he? No. No, he just said, good luck. You did just what he wanted you to do. That's why he slipped the letter to you instead of me. I might have jumped in like I did on Muldoon and taken all three of us off the case. As it is, he, he covered us good. So, let's get back on the job. 
I'll wash first, if you don't mind. I rubbed it in good, but it didn't seem to mean a thing to them. They never batted an eye. Then in your book, they're okay. You know me, I don't buy many gold bricks, but I'm almost sold on that pair. Keep your wallet in your pocket until we've checked with that old friend of the marshals down in Texas. Strap's lucky gun. If he'd had it on him, he might be alive today. Strap was only worrying about keeping the case alive. Now that we haven't got him as a listening post, we're on our own. Yeah, nobody to tip us off how close we're being watched. And time's running short, too. Somehow, one of us will have to get away and down into that smelter at Buena Vista. Got any ideas? Not a glimmer. Hanson all slicked up. Looks like he's going away. Find out where he's going. But why didn't you explain to Mr. Stratton and the others? Well, doggone it, I tried to. But they wouldn't believe me. Why, the way they acted, you might think I stole that lore myself. And that, that marshal was in with that gang, too. I'm going to take action, that's all. Dad, I won't have you mixed up in this. It's too dangerous. I ain't afeard. I'm going to see my friend, Lieutenant Governor Jim Black. He and me used to prospect together. And when I tell him about this ore, he'll bust this gang wide open. Dad, please, don't you? Just don't... No, Julie, I'm going and nothing's going to stop me. Don't worry about your own man. He'll be all right. Goodbye. All right. All right. Looks like your dad means business. Yes, and I'm worried to death about him. I don't blame you for worrying, ma'am. The wrong folks heard about that. Your dad's life wouldn't be worth a nickel. That's what I told him, but his mind's made up and there's nothing I can do about it. I wish we could do something to help you, Miss Julie. Oh, I don't see how... And there is someone who could help. Mr. Kirby likes Father. He's been very kind to him. Maybe he could think of some way to stop him. I'm sure he could. I'll go see him right away. This is the break we need. We'll grab old man Hanson off that stage and stash him away somewhere. How'll that help? It'll put us in solid with silver. And while we're guarding Hanson, I'll take a shot at that Buena Vista lead. Let's ride. Hanson wasn't on the stage. A couple of guys with masks held it up and took the old man away. Well, I reckon I'm guilty, Your Honor. You make rather hasty decisions, don't you, Ivers? We had to. The stage had left. I knew you didn't want Hanson stirring things up around Denver, so Larry and me picked him off the coach. Where is he? Larry's got him in that old trapper's cabin up on Tabor Mountain. I came in to tell you and take some supplies out to them. Smart thinking, Ivers. After all, you couldn't know that Julie Hanson would be foolish enough to tell us about her father. That's right. Of course, if you don't think holding the old man alive is safe enough... Well, that's good enough for now. Besides, I owe him a rain check for helping me get back that ore that you boys lifted. Yeah. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Not at all. Come in, Julie. I was just wondering if you'd done anything about Father. He's in good hands. He's the guest of our Texas friends in a mountain lodge. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks, Mr. Kirby. And thank you, Mr. Ivers. Only please don't tell him I had anything to do with it. He'd be furious with me. Oh, we won't, ma'am. Why, he doesn't even know that Mr. Kirby acted for you. He thinks we're members of the high graders and kidnapped him to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Mr. Ivers. Can't smoke till I get something to eat. Ain't enough you have to kidnap me. You're trying to starve me to death, too. Now. There's my partner with a grub. Just take it easy, Pop. Am <laughs> I glad to see you? Hi, Larry. How'd you make out? Well, if there are any names he hasn't called me, I don't know what they are. Coffee and bacon. Maybe this will soften the old boy's heart. How'd you make out with Kirby? Fine. We're now his fair-haired playmates. 
better get him to send me up some help. I can't stay awake another night listening to Hanson cuss. Well, I'll stick with it until I get back. I'm going down to Buena now to smoke out link number two. See you, Prano. I'll get the wagon backed up. We have to make today's train to Leadville.
back to work. Grinning Texas hyena. I only wish I had some rough on rats to put in it. Appreciate that, Pa. And don't call me Pop, gal, darn ya. Like I said when I fought with General Ulysses Grant, a Johnny Reb is just a no good cuss and never will be anything else. And that goes for you, now, too. Hold it, hold it, old timer. You got us all wrong. Hi, Brett. Hi, Larry. And just to prove it, I'm gonna send you in this afternoon on the train to Denver. What kind of new weasel pussin you trying now? Ah, maybe we got religion and turned honest. Go pack your release in a hurry. Glory be, will I? I got down in among the gophers, Larry. Slickest operation ever pulled. You mean they're smelting that gold underground? Not only that, they're plating it to make it look like ordinary pig lead and shipping it out that lead -plated way. Lead-plated gold bricks? Well, what do you know? Now, get this. The gold shipment's going out on the same train with you and Hanson. The crates are marked Pier 63, San Francisco. Pier 63. What about Hanson? Well, just keep him pacified until you get him to Denver and then turn him over to the U.S. Marshal there to hold his friendly custody. And at the same time, I follow the pig lead. Right. Now, get all the dope you can and then meet me back here at the shack. I'll let you know when I'm getting in. One of those love for mother telegrams. Check. <laughs> Well, what's holding us up? I'm ready. And if this ain't some more monkey shines, why, maybe I can get the governor to let you boys off for 20 years. Thanks. Well, well come on, let's get going. Come on. What do you know? The laundry man of Cripple Creek. Translate this for me, will you? It means, when this is in your hands, fulfill all obligations. In other words, on receipt of this, pay off. Yes, sir. Can you tell me when this will reach Cripple Creek? Well, let's see, uh, Denver, two days, Colorado Springs, three, stagecoach to Cripple Creek. It ought to be Thursday morning. Good, so will I. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Postmaster. Not at all. Ivers, ain't it? That's right. The operator down at the spring sent this up to you. Much obliged.
of all. Silver. What are you so glum about? Today's payday. The biggest we've ever had, set for 2 o'clock. Here's how the cuts are going to run. You'll get... Denver, you're just in time for the big news. Mine's not so good, boss. Well, that's what I get for counting my chips while the game's still running. Go ahead, spill it. Sheriff Summers of Dayton County met me halfway at Trinidad. That letter he wrote the marshal was about Ivers, not Gillis. It said the setup in Texas looked like Ivers was a government man working on the inside with the border smugglers. And Gillis covered for Ivers and Galland. A three-horse team. Looks that way, but what are they waiting for? They must know everything there is to know by now. No. No, they can't possibly know who pays us off or when it's to be. Could be that's what they're waiting for. Send a couple of men up to the cabin and bring in Galland and the old man and tell Ivers I want to see him. Shouldn't take us long to find out exactly how much they do know. Hey, Galant! Nobody here. It's a cold camp. There hasn't been anybody here for days. Was asleep. I just went after him. <laughs> Saddlebags. Oh, you boys get funny ideas, don't you? Cabot. I figured you might be here. Yeah, I was just looking for my pal Larry. Oh, he's gone on in with the boys. Say, Silver wants to see us all there. This is payday. The big payoff, eh? <laughs> Sounds mighty fine. <laughs> you said it. Looks like there's been a fight in the cabin. You sure Larry is all right? Oh, sure he is. I passed him on the way up. Funny I didn't. They took the cutoff. Come on, I'll show you. Maybe it was old man Hanson who put up the fight. How did he look? Oh, fine and dandy. Still passing everybody in sight. All I want to know, Galand, is uh, where you went with the old man. And whether you and Ivers have sent for any help. Keep on trying, Silver. I may break down any minute. Our obstinate young friend has told me more than he realizes. If he were expecting help, he'd be bragging about it. I think it's safe to go ahead with the payoff. In the meantime, keep our friend well entertained. Tell you the good news? Yeah, I sure did. I'm uh, giving a little party in honor of the occasion. Go on up and join the boys. I'll be back in a little while. Right. Enjoy yourself. You first, Cabo. 
bow. Hold it! Get rid of those guns. Left hand. On time. Everybody's payday but ours. Is that the idea, Denver? It's your play, Ivers. Spread your cards on the table. Okay, you're all under arrest. Hold it! Get him up! Take him down to the Miners Committee and let them take care of them. All right, get moving. of the high graders. Mr. Hatton, I'm placing them in your charge. Take over. I'll be very glad to do so. Moore, Johnson, Hibbs. Well, kid, there's only one chance now to complete our case. If Silver Kirby is still around, he may try to collect the payoff. The Chinese laundry's a spot to watch. I learned that in Frisco. Well, what are we waiting for? Well, at least Miss Julie don't have to do her own washing. You don't get your laundry in the back room. Can she be in on this, too? Too. There's no telling how much they found out. If they don't know about you, they couldn't have any suspicions about me. And my market for unlisted gold is inexhaustible. Sorry, Mr. Sullivan, but the market is closed. I'll take that back, Julie. Not a payoff, Larry. All in brand new U.S. yellowbacks. You're a prisoner of the government you were supposed to serve, Mr. James C. Sullivan. Sir, the name is James Chang Sullivan. 
And I only owe allegiance to my mother's country. And by now, the gold is well on its way to the Dowager Empress of China. Sorry to disappoint you, but by now, it's in the mint in San Francisco. Take our Oriental friends to the Miners Committee while I ask Miss Hanson some questions. Drop that gun, Galan. Julie, dear, take that bag out to the buckboard and wait for me. Give her the bag, Ivers. Julie can't stand bloodshed. Not a bad try for a gal who can't stand bloodshed. He was my husband. What a foolish pair of young men you are. There's a half million in that bag and the possibility of much more to come. And I'll bet he could even get us an introduction to the Empress of China. I'll bet he could. <laughs> That's too bad, Larry. We're just a couple of chumps. Born to die poor. But honest. Yeah, I reckon that's about the most money we ever don't get as long as we live. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Am I wrong, or are my services again in demand? You get around fast, don't you? In my profession, it pays to keep one's ear attuned to the bark of a six-gun. If this keeps up, I really have to put you two on a commission basis. <laughs> and thank you again, gentlemen. Well, if we ever need one, we got a job. <laughs> Brett. That Texas lingo of yours had me fooled. I thought the Panhandle boys were back. Well, Chief Brother. Hello, Ivers. Glad to see you, sir. So you did get my wire after all. Yeah, I got it all right, but I had quite a time following your instructions. <laughs> when you didn't reach Ratoon on time, Galand and I started down to see what had happened to you. <laughs> Every peace officer in Texas was after my scout for that border job. <laughs> How come you didn't clear me with the state authorities? It's better this way, Brett. Your Texas reputation may help a lot on that Cripple Creek case. Oh, so that's where we're going. It's the biggest gold-stealing case in history. They're getting away with tons of it. Well, how can they hope to sell tons of gold in the United States, sir? They don't. They're smuggling it out of the country. Sounds like a big job. Big and dangerous. More than a dozen local peace officers have already been killed, merely trying to stop the high graders. Is that as far as they got? Yes, but that's only the first link. And we want every link in that chain. But most of all, the men who engineered the scheme and arranged the payoff. Is this big bronc the only help I'm to have? No, oh, ain't that nice. <laughs> <laughs> you won't go wrong with Larry, but you'll also have his brother's strap. Well, now that's better.
is where you find it, the miners say. And this was never better demonstrated than at Cripple Creek, Colorado, where back in 1892, a cowboy stubbed his toe on a strange-looking piece of rock and started one of the last gold rushes in Western history. Within a year, 50 deep shafts were pouring out tons of the richest ore ever found. The town grew fast and loud, and as usual, men died faster and louder. the customary violence and bloodshed of a gold camp, something new was added to make Cripple Creek unique among all her sinful sisters. Waylaying shipments of smelted gold was too old-fashioned for the Cripple Creek gangs. These boys weren't waiting for the ore to reach the smelter. Wagon load upon wagon load of the highest grade stuff, some of it... Where do we pick him up? He's already in Cripple Creek, giving it the ones over. Any report from him yet? Nothing definite, but he spotted one of the toughest gangs in the West, the Muldoon outfit. Working for the Cabo Liberty Stable. Well, that might be a lead, sir. Maybe. Anyhow, Strap suggests that a couple of new gunfighters and outlaws might find it easy to make a hookup. Well, with Billy the Kid here as a partner, I can't miss. <laughs> but don't force your hand. The right people will spot you soon enough. Where do we find Strap? Don't try. He'll be watching for you. Let him make the contact. Well, that's all I have to tell you. From here on, you're on your own. Thanks, Chief. But I'm counting on the three of you. Thank you, sir. Way to the livery stable, friend. Livery stable? Right down there at the end of the street. Henri, Jake, three wagons to go back to the woodcutter's camp tonight. Fresh horses and sober drivers. Yes, boss. You early, Muldoon. We don't roll for a couple of hours. We won't roll at all till we get our pay for those last three jobs. You get your pay when I get mine, not before. We want ours now, or you can get yourself a new crew. Nobody quits this outfit. I'll see the boss. Go ahead. Stable your ponies, Jets? Thanks. We'll take care of them for you. Any ideas to where we can get a room around here? It's hard to say. The town's overcrowded. You might try over the Silver Palace. Much obliged. Customers, Jake. $60,000 a load was simply disappearing in the thin Rocky Mountain air. They got Sam the driver, two of the mine crew, and wounded four others besides me. Well, couldn't you identify any of them? No, Marshal. They were all masked. That's the tenth wagon load of my richest ore that's been hijacked this month. And six loads of mine never got to the smelter. The way they select only the richest ore, you'd think they had access to my secret assay reports. I think you gentlemen should appeal to your senators in Washington. What do you suggest, Sullivan? Well, as the government assayer, I must agree with the Marshal. The loss of gold in such quantities is a matter of national concern. Gentlemen, I think that's a good idea. They were right about that. It was a matter of national concern. For this year of 1893 was one of financial depression and near panic. The country's gold reserve had reached such a low ebb that President Cleveland placed an embargo on the sale and shipment of that precious metal to foreign nations. Every ounce of gold was needed by the national treasury. So the problem of the wholesale looting of Cripple Creek mines became the immediate and urgent business of the United States Secret Service.
That'll have to be, gents. What do you see about getting a room here? You can ask the boss there, Mr. Kirby. Mr. Kirby? Better known as Silver Kirby. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Now well, we'd like to get a room. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we're all filled up. Well, every man in Cabot figured you might be able to take care of us. Oh, I see. And you boys must have ridden up from the valley tonight. Yeah, 40-mile day. It's a long pull. Let's see if we can't do something for you. Julie. Have we a canceled reservation available for these gentlemen? Why, yes. We had a room ready for Mr. McKee, but he's gone back to Victor. Well, boys, it looks like you're in luck. Come along, gentlemen. I'll show you the way. Thanks, ma'am. And thank you for being so accommodating. Glad to oblige. That's what we're here for. I wonder what Cabot saw in those two to worry about. Maybe it's the way they sling their artillery. Texas style, low and handy. I suppose you boys came here hoping to get rich quickly like all the others. No, ma'am, we just drifted up from Texas to take in the sights of Cripple Creek. <laughs> yeah, and we sure like what we've seen so far. They must have moved the Blarney Stone to Texas. Here's the room. We had it ready for Mr. McKee. He owns the gold dollar mine. So at least you boys will sleep in a millionaire's bed. Yeah, it looks real cozy like. Thanks, Miss Julie. Not at all. It's part of my job. Now, if you'll give me your names, I'll register for you. Ivers is mine. Bert Ivers. This is Larry Gallant. Mine's Julie Hansen. Good night. Good night, Miss Julie. Night, ma'am. 